Welcome to The Simple Life. We're gonna go over types of potatoes, how we're gonna grow them this year, how we've grown them in the past, and one extra trick that I've heard works really good, and we're gonna try it this year, and let's see how good it works. There are actually three types of potatoes. Well, there are a lot more varieties, but three types. The three types of potatoes are first early, second early, and main crop. Now, what is the difference between these three types? So the big difference between the three types of potatoes is the date to maturity. For first early, it's gonna be 10 to 12 weeks. For second early, it's gonna be 12 to 15 weeks. And for your main crop, it's gonna be about 16 to 22 weeks, somewhere in there. Now, there is another kind of subtle difference, and this is one of those differences that we're not used to talking about when it comes to potatoes. You have determinate and indeterminate potatoes. Yes, just like tomatoes, but with potatoes. And you know what? It's kind of the same thing. Let me explain. With a determinate potato, which are going to be your first early and second early crop, they only grow on one level, one root level. But with your indeterminate potatoes, those are gonna be your main crop, they will grow on multiple levels. So that's where hilling becomes something that's actually valuable. So if you're gonna plant multiple things in the bed over the course of the seasons, you may wanna be picking between first early, second early, and main crop. For the area we're gonna plant, we're gonna be planting both first early and main crop. The first of these we're gonna plant are gonna be these guys, red Pontiac. And then we're gonna be planting some main crop, and those are gonna be russets. Now that we know the difference between the different types of potatoes, let's talk about how we're gonna plant them. Last year, we planted in some potato towers. It didn't work very well. I needed to plant indeterminate potatoes for that to work. This year, we're not gonna be doing the towers. This year, we are going to be planting right behind you. And this is the area we are gonna put our potatoes. Now we just tilled this up and I haven't had time to come in here and put silage tarp or any of that kind of stuff down. So we are gonna try a method that I've never tried before. Not completely, let me explain. We have a couple hundred boxes. They were sitting in a shed that we took down. So we are gonna take those. The boys are currently cutting those up and we are gonna use them and we're gonna put them across this area, right across here. And then we're gonna put our compost on top. We're gonna do a no-till or no-dig bed system here we are not gonna put in the whole entire garden. The idea is because I need somewhere to put potatoes and I don't have anywhere prepped for it, this area is probably gonna be the best. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put them right here. We're gonna use cardboard as our first layer of like a mulch to help protect from weeds coming up. Then we're gonna bring in a bunch of our compost. We're gonna put our compost down. We're gonna lay it in nice and thick. Then we're gonna put a small amount of wood chips in our walkways. We'll probably do two, maybe three rows, depending on how many potatoes we have. I have a 50 pound sack of russets, as well as I have seeds from last year when we grew uh, red Pontiac, I believe. And so we're gonna grow those two varieties right here. Okay, so you can see we made three potato beds. We're not done, we're actually gonna bring some wood chips in. We were gonna put about six inches of wood chips around the whole entire thing for about a foot or two. This is only one part of this huge area. I mean, I have over a half an acre that I could actually be putting in beds, but I don't have that much compost. Matter of fact, I think I only have about a yard and a half, maybe two yards of compost left. So, the best part about the way we are working is I just need to make more. Next year, about this time, we will have more compost to build more beds out. And that's how we're gonna do this. But for now, are you guys ready to do the wood chips in the beds? Now that's a little bit of overkill for potatoes because for potatoes, you actually don't have to do that much to get them to grow healthily. Is healthily a word? I don't think it is, but that's okay. We'll keep moving. Potatoes are very much a settler, a frontier crop. It's something you can just plant in the ground and it will grow. As long as it has the three important things, warm soil to grow in when it starts because it doesn't want to grow in cold, wet, clammy soil. It's going to want something warm and we'll address that. The second thing is good spacing. If you grow them too tight, they're just not gonna do very good. And the third thing is water, the appropriate amount of water. Okay, let's address the soil. 
So when it comes to the soil that we're gonna be using, we're doing a no-dig system. So we already put down compost, and that compost is dark and it's wet, and actually with the sun we're gonna have for the next about five days, it's gonna heat up really nicely because it's dark. The other thing I could do is I could put a silage tarp over it to help create more heat. That would be awesome for the potatoes. You don't want it to be hot, you just want it to be warm enough so the potatoes feel like it's a perfect place, a cozy place to grow. Now when it comes to spacing, if you space them too tightly together, you're going to have issues when they start to grow. So I'm gonna space mine about 16 inches apart. So I have about 30 inch wide beds. I'm gonna put two every 16 inches. That's gonna give us plenty of potatoes. So we're gonna be planting two varieties, a indeterminate and a determinate. The determinate ones, we're gonna come back and we're gonna plant some stuff over them once we pull them out in about 10 weeks. The main crop or the indeterminate we are gonna leave in all the way through almost to the end of summer, which is gonna be about five months from now. A little less, a little bit more, somewhere in there. All right, the boys and I, we got all the wood chips down. It looks good, let me show you. You don't understand how much work and time has gone into getting to this point. And we aren't even, there's nothing on the ground. It's the making the beds, using our compost, building up the, infrastructure, the supplies, everything we need to get to this point. And we haven't even built the ponds. We are just getting started. <sighs> and remember, I think I talked to you about a month ago, talked about this being like a victory garden. This isn't exactly what I was thinking right here, but they're here. They will be here, they will stay here. But the rest of this, we're gonna have to put some raised beds in here. We're gonna have to do some really nice stuff in here and uh, make it so that way this is a place to come and enjoy some delicious vegetables. Hey, look at this sunset. Let me show you the sunset, it's beautiful. Look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous out tonight. So when it comes to planting potatoes, there's a couple things that you can do. You can take the whole entire potato seed and you can put it in. This is a little bit smaller one. This is one of our red Pontiacs from last year. I'm gonna put the whole entire thing in. But if you have a little bit bigger one, this isn't quite big enough, but if it was bigger than this, you could cut it and make sure that you keep two eyes. And those two eyes are gonna be just enough to start. Now Herman, this is his cabin, but he's not here right now, or he'd be out here telling you all kinds of stuff about potatoes. He told me a trick of how he deals with cutting potatoes. Some people will leave them out to cure them. He told me what he used to do is he would take them and he would dip them in wood ash. So that wood ash, not only does it have nutrients for the potato, but it also helps seal that off so your potato doesn't rot. I didn't know that until last year when he told me that, and guess what? It seemed to work. Now going forward, as we keep potatoes each year and we continue to grow them, we will be keeping some of them for seed. And in those cases, I'm not paying for those. So if they're small like this, I probably won't cut them. But if they're bigger and then we're, we keep them all the way through and we don't eat them, which highly unlikely that we will actually not eat them, we will probably cut those and dip them in wood ash, like I was saying. Once we're done planting all these, we are gonna take a little wood ash and sprinkle it in there just to help them along the way as they get a little older. The best part is because we burn wood, we have plenty of clean wood ash from our stoves. There are so many different methods of how to grow potatoes. You can do the five gallon bucket, you can do a grow bag, you can do a raised bed, you can do the potato tower, but if you're gonna do potato towers, make sure that you're using an indeterminate potato not a determinate potato. And remember, the indeterminate potatoes are gonna be your main crop, the determinate ones are gonna be your first early and second early crops. All right, let's get to work. This is probably complete overkill for potatoes. I could put anything I wanted in here. So we have 150 feet of bed here. It's 30 inches wide, we are gonna be planting two rows, 16 inches apart, spaced every 16 inches, and that's gonna give us more than enough potatoes, I think, We'll find out to make it all the way through winter until next spring. Once again, we're gonna have two varieties, both indeterminate and determinate. So let's get to work. So we have a bunch of eyes on here. Okay, so we're gonna come through and I'm gonna look for where the root was originally attached to the plant last year. Okay, so we're gonna cut this and make sure that whatever two sides we have are both have at least two of these eyes. And then we'll dip it in some ash and I'll show you what Herman showed me to do when it came to dealing with this. All right. Yeah, this is definitely. Whoop, look at that. All righty. So 
We have a whole entire bucket of ashes. This is right over out of the wood stove. And we know what's been burnt in there because we burned it all winter long. We take it. That's what we do. Just dip it in the ash. And then we're just going to bury it right there. We'll take this one that has a couple eyes over here. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to make sure those eyes are facing up. Okay. So there's my eye there. And there's, there's one right there and one right there. We're going to face it up like that. And then we're going to move along. Make sure we get these, you know, there's, and you'll see these are about 16 inches apart. Let's move this back over here. By the way, if you want to know what kind of knife this is, they are amazing. I love them. They're by the company Sword, but it's S-V-O-R-D. It's called Peasant's Knife. And I've had all kinds of pocket knives, and these are the absolute best ones. You know why? For $19, you're never going to lose it. It's like one of those guaranteed things. They have almost no moving parts. It's just a couple brass pins, and uh, they're amazing. The boys have them, I have them, and they work absolutely wonderful. And I, I've i lost expensive knives, but I've never lost a cheap knife. It's funny how that works. Okay, so I got all our russet potatoes in. Actually, not all of them. I got most of them in. I still have about a half a five-gallon bucket, and I might do an experiment with them. I want to see how they grow in the native soil um, without any extra anything done to them. We're just going to take a shovel, pop a hole, drop them in, throw a little ash on top, and close it back up and water them and see how they do. I'm curious how they perform in the native soil with no amendments versus the no dig ones. We're gonna do a test. So right now what we are gonna work on is we are gonna work on these. We are gonna plant these. These are the potatoes from last year that I like to seed, sprout. Well, technically I didn't let them do it. They just did it when they were in storage. And our storage isn't a great facility, so that's probably why they did it. That being said, we are gonna plant them right now. The boys are gonna help me because obviously a lot of these have already sprouted and we wanna keep from breaking these little sprouts off. So the boys are gonna hand them to me while I put them in and uh, that's how we're gonna do this. The ones, there's a few of these and these are, I believe the russets from last year. Herman stole a potato from me and he gave me back one of these. Long story short, we'll save these for the very end but we'll do the red ones for now. We're gonna do them at the same spacing we did the other ones. And so the boys are just gonna hand them to me. I'm gonna dig them in, put them about six inches down, cover them with compost, sprinkle a little uh, ash on top of them and call it a day. Okay, so we're about to make JDOM Microbial Solution, JMS. Now, it's not very hard to make. It's super easy to make. Matter of fact, it's so easy to make. We're gonna do it right here with things that we already have because, well, that's how easy it is. Now, this can be applied to any portions of your garden during your growing season or in this case, I'm gonna inoculate my potatoes with this right now. Well, not today, because it takes a couple days for it to actually brew. And while it's brewing, we are gonna be doing a few other things. But in two days, when it's done brewing, we're gonna apply it, and I'll show you how we're gonna apply it when we get there. But let's make it real quick. Okay, so what we have is we have well water. If you have just regular tap water and you don't have well water or spring water, you can just let it sit out and the chlorine will gas off over the period of a day or so. The other thing that you need, so important, and you're gonna laugh when you see this, because we are gonna feed the microbials from our compost with a potato. I know, but we're growing potatoes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it in a bag, cheesecloth bag, okay? We're gonna crush it up, make it nice and gooey in there. Okay, now we're gonna take this and we're gonna put this in the bucket. There's multiple ways of making this solution. Some people use an aerator, some people put it on a heating pad, some people uh, do both of those things. Some people do none of it, okay? So we're gonna take this, we're gonna pull a little drawstring and we're gonna stick it in the water. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our, this is a couple handfuls, okay? And we're gonna take this, this is our compost, okay? That's all that's in here is our compost. We're gonna take this and we're gonna put it in the water and we're gonna then start massaging it to get all the microbials out of our compost and into the water. So we put it in and right away you're gonna see, see all that, all that, sediment. We want that sediment because that sediment has our microbials in it. Squeeze it out. Now we're going to leave these bags in here, okay? And this is our potato. Once again, we're going to squeeze our potato. So we're going to leave these in here for about 48 hours. That's all it's going to stay is about 48 hours. And we do not want anything getting into this five-gallon bucket, but we also don't want to seal this five-gallon bucket off. So we need to put somewhere where it's room temperature warm, so we'll come back, we'll check on this tomorrow, and then we'll check on it the next day. Tomorrow, it should be kind of foamy. Okay, so this is actually 36 hours after we 
mixed up everything for our solution. I wanna show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like, okay? You can see some of that foam kind of starting to, to build up. So it, it's not scummy or scuzzy. I think we're doing good. It doesn't smell off. So I'm gonna put it back in the cabin. So day two and a half of our JMS solution and it's looking good. It's got a little bit of foam on it. Nothing crazy, let me show you. So you can see that those little, those little islands right there, that is very typical of our water here. All right, we are gonna put it in our little watering can. I'll show you our very fancy high-end watering can. We got this off of this premier website called uh, Herman's Old Shed. Yes, this is what we're gonna use. He used it, it worked for him, so we're gonna use it. Typically, if you're gonna be putting this in your garden, like we're gonna be putting it in the other garden, you wanna water it down 20 to one. But I've heard that doing it straight and just drizzling it over the tops of where you planted your potatoes is excellent and it's worth doing. So we're gonna try it this year and see how it works out. If you wanna try it with me, let me know how it works out for you. And it smells kind of yeasty, kind of brewy, kind of like a beer. A weird beer, but a beer. All right, it's pretty easy. We're just gonna come along and we're just gonna do a quick little drenching all the way down the row. All right, so that's kind of how we're, we're applying this. We're gonna go down each of the rows. So we're gonna be mixing this up about once a week, helping boost the microbials in each of our gardens. All it costs me is a potato and a little bit of time. So I figure it's worth it. And from what I've seen, you can get pretty good results. So why not give it a try? Thank you guys so much for coming along this week on our adventure, planting some potatoes, learning some stuff because I learned a whole lot. I hope you did too. And we'll see you guys next week when we start planning our garden. All right, have a good one.